Environmental sculptor Roy Staub is internationally known for his site-specific installations. His work is designed to go up and then decay in its surroundings. Check it out. Sculpture for me is big drawings. The magic of making this work for 33 years is that that moment it comes together and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of and excited that it happens. The Villa Terrace Decorative Arts Museum will be celebrating 50 years as a public institution next year in 2017. It was the original home of Lloyd and Agnes Smith of the A.O. Smith Corporation. Agnes Smith donated the mansion to the community in 1967 and we've been enjoying it ever since. We're a community arts-based organization that features local, regional, and Wisconsin-based artists with three changing exhibitions um, every year. This is the Renaissance Garden and it uh, came into being in 2001 and it's a, a classical garden so that it, we're working with symmetry and it has some classical sculptures and features to it. So we do a variety of things here and what's great about uh, Roy Staub's exhibition is that it's the first time that we've done a site-specific sculptural installation in the garden. He is a locally based, site-specific environmental artist, and he does work all around the world, and um, he's just a, a local treasure. I call my work environmental because I use the materials from the environment, and also the site is close to the materials. The reeds are weeds, nobody cares about them, but they're growing right where I'm working. Now here I'm not using reeds, but I'm using willow. And willow grows by the lake and in an abundance, so I can pick it and it'll grow easily again. Every year I try to look for a form I could use as I progressed or changed. And then I f somebody told me about ovals. And a rounded form is better in nature than a square line when it's real long. So I'm, I'm using ovals, squares, rectangles, triangles, and it's in line. My vocabulary is line. When Roy works, he really kind of meditates on the space that the piece is going to be constructed in. And so here at the Villa Terrace, being a formal classical garden, um, he's really looking at the symmetry um, and playing off of that as well. We call it shadow dance. Why shadow dance? Because it's on this beautiful grass. It's going to be linear and there's a shadow on below it. This is a formal garden. There's a, a channel going down the middle and a crisscross, and that's the axis like most formal gardens have. My vocabulary is ovals and circles, and that's what I'm using in this piece. And they're overlapping, and it's all about space. Sculpture is space. So this piece is made specifically for this site. That's the size I can get, and I went maximum. The process of making the work is you have to collect the materials. Then you have to lay out the work. Then you have to put it together. It all takes time. I used willow, and this is a wild willow. It grows in nature in clumps by the water, and we spent five hours picking this material. So it will be willow, and the horizontal, I want it to be very clear. Grass is green, and I'm gonna use reeds again. When they're bundled, they're strong. So I will use those reeds uh, as the horizontal work, a graphic work, to be seen from above and to be uh, sensed in the environment where you are down here. So we have a circle. We have an oval going through the circle. And as the formal garden has oval, 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 oval. And this will make the piece. You put them in, it's like a very simple thing. And then I weave the line, I'll, put the, I'll attach the line. Wove, I'll be woven and bundled, and I'll attach it to these uh, supports. It's all about balance and engineering of the work. That's what an artist has to do. Design and engineering it and making it happen. We work when we have to work. Um, process. You never know how long it's going to take, exactly. You just work until you're done. It's not a nine to five job. You work until it's dark, come back the next day, work again and again until it's completed. When the piece is done, 
I want it to be seen from on top. And I want you, I want you to see a magical form of line. Uh, a line that is this formal garden in my vocabulary. Look at it from the terrace, you can kind of get the visual. It's like kind of looking at a labyrinth from above where you can see all the twists and turns. And then when you come down and get into it, you have a completely different perspective. And we're hoping that they interact with the sculpture. It's definitely something that's meant to be walked in and around and interacting with. The site-specific sculpture is only one part of the exhibition. We are also having a retrospective of photographs from Roy's work from around the world. And that's kind of the interesting thing with environmental site-specific art, is that it's meant to be temporary. It's made from nature, within nature, and it's meant to decay into atrophy. And so really how that lives on is that photographs and videos are taken. And then this, the third part is um, a collection of baskets from John Shannon and Jan Sayre that Roy curated. So he went and picked a number of these baskets that are made with some of the same materials that he works with. And um, we're going to have these exquisite baskets on display as well. When people come to my, to my sculpture, I hope they find a kind of quietness and a peace. Peace in, in what nature is supposed to give you. So I hope they take away a peacefulness and an intellectual play of my geometry. Art has to be art. It's not about money, it's about beauty and what you can give to other people because art is sharing.